the oscilloscope is often the central instrument in electronics testing. Today's 12-bit oscilloscopes offer capabilities that were once unimaginable. Today, we're talking with specialists about advanced features and how to get the most out of your instrument. The higher resolution you get, the better you can see, especially if you are working with the tiny signals. Think about embedded design, right? We are going down from the very old TTL logic, right? No more 5 volts, 3.3 volts. Now, really, you are in the 1 volt or less than 1 volt range for the power rails, and you are in the millivolt range for the data lanes. So the signal is really tiny. With the new 12-bit uh, ADCs, uh, you can see more details in your signal, especially when trying to zoom in the vertical axis or uh, for example, if you want to bring the um, data on a PC to force our uh, analysis of it, to see finest details, uh, 12 bits has a big advantage. Just like the biomedical applications or some of the tiny signal retrieving applications, we can use the 12-bit oscilloscope to retrieving the tiny signals, but we can analyze the signals uh, within a very high resolution and uh, very specific uh, vertical scale yeah, to amplify this signal into more details. The, our highlight point is the biomedical engineering yeah, or semiconductor testing. That's a tiny signal within a small dynamic range and with a very high uh, background noise. So we need to use the 12 bits yeah, to implement these applications. Wow. Especially if you have uh, a smaller noise signal on a DC level, you want to see all the, the slower DC um, portion of the signal with a higher voltage together with the small noise on it. Uh, then a higher resolution, a higher vertical resolution help to see booths in uh, one shot. Nowadays there are 10 bits ADCs, 12 bits ADCs, so you know, the, the architecture of the ADCs is evolving and you are able to do multi-bit multi ADCs that samples also very fast because it's always a compromise, right? It's not a problem to design like a 24-bit ADC. The problem is that this ADC will be able to sample very slow. But if you want to go into the giga sample sample rate, you know, you have to compromise on the dynamic of the ADCs. ADC is a, uh, is a um, in the spec you can read it's an 8-bit or a 12-bit and um, it's very difficult to understand am I actually getting all that 12 bits of data into my screen. So uh, a big quantifier that we use in our data sheets is something called this effective number of bits. What that means is the ADC itself has an amount of bits but there's a front end involved, there's other ECB traces and things like there's a board, a uh, complete board involved. And a probe. And a probe. <laughs> so you then, we give a figure that actually tells you how much of effective number of bits you get out of the ADC depending on your frequency that you're actually measuring. So having a clean response on your front end of your instrument becomes really, really important because you don't want to see anything that's being generated from the scope itself because that will... I don't know, take lots of design, you know, iterations and so on. Trying just to, to find... remove the noise which isn't there. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know that uh, IEEE, several years ago, <laughs> decades ago, tried to find out a way to uniform how we judge how an oscilloscope is good in digitizing, right? Because uh, the nominal bits, they wanted to define this concept what what does it mean and they try to find a, a way to 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 do that right not just telling you how many bits you have the bit depth so how many levels that doesn't really tells you much you want to understand how are the real useful bits that in the conditions that you are operating with that sample rate with that bandwidth with, with that, that signal. front end exactly with that front end right uh, and you want you want to quantify that somehow and, uh, you know, they came up with a formula that uh, moved the problem to translate the effective number of bits from something you can calculate out of the 
let's say, the signal to noise ratio, right? The dynamics. That's really important. So you want to have a very low noise floor on your oscilloscope and you want your ADC to be as linear as possible because this also spoils the signal. You don't want to have uh, uh, errors in the, the sampling. The jitter on the clock of your sampler may translate into an error in the quantization that is somehow uh, affecting your signal as it was noise. But all this contribution reduce the real dynamics that you have and therefore you think that you are using an 8-bit ADC but maybe in those conditions you are using 4.5 but that might be still fine, right? If you are measuring a very fast Ethernet signal at hundreds of gigabit per second well, 4 bits at 50 gigahertz, well, can be more than enough you don't need because it's just either 0 or 1 It's the high speed, the biggest uh, top also so box that means that we can address for high speed to zero bus applications beyond the several gigahertz applications. So the 12 bits currently are not so important because the customer was pay attention to the high speed. Yeah, it's not for a high resolution. It improves the signal quality, of course, uh, features like average, uh, high resolution, or other filters can be used to uh, get noise off, unwanted noise from the front end uh, or from other sources. So I would say that the high res mode or the HD mode is mainly geared for um, low frequency, which mainly means power analysis. So in the, in the power spectrum, if you like, a few kilohertz, megahertz and so on. Okay, we are going higher in, in switching frequencies but a lot of them, a majority of them, are in the lower frequency range. And that's really where we see the biggest advantage. Because a lot of people do averaging, but when you do averaging, you need to have a periodic signal. We also uh, introduced the concept, I mean, long time ago, of high resolution, high, by using oversampling and decimation, right? You can actually do that because you sample more than you need, right? And then you decimate back, so you spread the quantization noise across a larger bandwidth, and in this case is as if you were somehow increasing the number of bits of the sampler, but, you know, telling that you have really 16 bits or 18 bits, that really doesn't make sense, because this is after signal processing, right? So the ENOB, uh, let's say, concept to me is more fair. The, the ENOB is, is a far greater um, figure of merit um, of the ADC and the whole system performance. Of course, that's not the only um, figure of merit. There's also like DC offset, how much DC accuracy you have, because of course we're also seeing the DC element in a scope compared to a spectrum analyzer or so on. So there are different other figures of merits to actually look at, but I would say the ENOB value is what gives you the most uh, quantifiable way of actually finding out how much bits that you can actually see.